In 2021, Mount Niragongo erupted. The fastest lava in the world started gushing towards the city of Goma and Lake Kivu. Scientists were worried that this deadly event could trigger something even worse deep within the lake. It will kill everything, humans, wildlife, and everything that will be all around. An event that cannot be seen or heard, but could kill millions. It's called a limnic eruption. Yes, yeah, so limnic eruptions fortunately are rare because they're also incredibly, incredibly dangerous. Around the world in very specific locations, you have these lakes that are normally very deep, and uh, unlike other lakes, they don't kind of overturn and squish around by the seasons very much. So these lakes first have to form in areas that are tectonically or volcanically active. When you have magma shifting about deep below the surface, this magma often has gases trapped in it. Carbon dioxide is a really common one. If you have a lake there that's incredibly deep, the lake acts as basically a storage device for this gas because the lake is so deep and the, the, the water at the bottom of the lake is under so much pressure that it, it acts as kind of like a vault for this gas. And the worry is that if you fill up the vault with too much of this gas, it will it explode out of the lake. So it's a rare phenomenon, but it's unfortunately one that when it does exist, it's, it's incredibly hazardous. There are two ways in which these lakes can explode and release this toxic gas. The first is oversaturation, where there's so much gas stored that it cannot take anymore and needs to be released. The second is where something happens that causes a sudden mixing of the water. The troubling thing for geologists is that one of these killer lakes lies at the foot of Mount Niragongo, Lake Kivu. The concern is that large volcanic activity could lead to underground lava flows, which if they reach the lake, could cause the colder, dense water to warm and rise to the surface, which could potentially trigger an eruption. And that's what got everyone on edge in 2021. Something local biologist, Prince Calame, who studies the lake, remembers all too well. The volcanic eruption of 2021 actually kind of su surprised many people. Part of the city actually where the lava flowed, a number of houses were destroyed and very big part of the city going that side was actually covered by the lava. And so all the houses were covered and everything kind of melted with this very high temperature materials coming. But then when it comes to the lake, then that's where actually we are fear of a, pot of a potential or possible uh, limnic eruption because the, 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 the lava could actually act as a trigger actually for to get the, the, the CO2 from deep lake actually to come out. And so where you live, there is no more oxygen and people may die by suffocation. That is where the CO2 is very, very big problem actually when there is an electronic eruption, the CO2 that comes out is the problem because it will kill everything, humans, wildlife, and everything that will be all around. To be clear, these eruptions aren't just theoretical, they're very real, and they've happened before. Most recently, in August 1986. The first accounts have started coming from northwest Cameroon about the disaster caused by a poisonous cloud from a volcanic lake. Residents in the area say around 90% of people in the surrounding villages were killed by the toxic fumes. No one can kind of agree what caused the eruption. Um, there's arguments it could have been an earthquake, maybe it was a landslide, but something basically caused all this trapped carbon dioxide to just erupt out. Um, and this carbon dioxide just cascaded down slope and killed 1,700 people uh, in their sleep and, you know, many more uh, animals and I think you know, because it just wiped out all these villages in so quickly and so stealthily, like no one knew what happened until people turned up the next day and just saw all these people dead with no apparent external injuries. So it's quite a terrifying sight to behold. But yeah, unfortunately, this kind of disaster could happen again at that lake or other lakes around the world if something's not done about them. There was no warning. The CO2 flooding down from the lake had no smell and no visible signs. That eruption in 1986 really kind of underscored how dangerous these lakes could be. It really made a point of this, this kind of disaster can happen. Um, and I think it really woke up the scientific community, but also just the region to the dangers that these lakes can pose. After the eruption of Lake Neos, scientists began looking for solutions. Michel Halbax was convinced there was a way to avoid another disaster by releasing the trapped gas at the bottom. But first he had to prove it. On est arrivé à Niort, 
on a, il y avait une très bonne équipe de soutien. J'ai acheté 200 mètres de petits tubes. Je me suis procuré ce qu'on appelle une pompe pyroclastique. C'est simplement une pompe qui aspire le liquide et qui le rejette. Bon, on a pompé, on a pompé et à un moment, on a vu apparaître le liquide. Le liquide est sorti. Il apparaît que quelques bulles, puis plus de bulles. On a arrêté la pompe, le, le jet a augmenté et on a vu apparaître un jet de 50 cm de haut qui crachait en permanence. On a arrêté la pompe, ça marchait. Bon, c'est la démonstration qu'on peut vider ces lacs, simplement. And that's exactly what they did. After the successful demonstration, the team installed larger, permanent systems which successfully degassed both lakes in Cameroon, preventing another disaster and potential loss of life. Je suis très fier de, de ce qu'on a fait. Euh, D'ailleurs, bon, même au Cameroun, c'est connu maintenant. C'est connu que les lacs sont inoffensifs. The efforts were extremely successful and the lakes have now been declared safe. Now attention has turned to solving the issue of Kivu. There are some upsides and downsides. The downsides being its size, 2,000 times bigger than Neos. Degassing it is a huge undertaking. The upside is that one of the gases in Kivu that's causing the pressure is methane, a gas that can be used to create energy. In the case of, uh, of Kivu, the situation is a very different one because there the methane gas, which causes most of the gas pressure, has an economic value. And so, uh, and so the logic thing is then uh, to use the gas and then have the uh, double win-win uh, situation, producing energy at the same time and uh, as, a, as a reducing the risk. Once the methane is basically used up then, and only the, uh, the CO2 is left, then the danger is very low. Then basically the danger has been removed. A power plant has been built floating on Kivu and is currently producing 25 megawatts of power. In the next few years, they hope to increase this to 100 doubling the total amount of energy production for the entire country. A welcome benefit for many living in the region. In a country where we've got actually a deficit, that kind of a problem with electricity, it's actually, people are very excited actually to know that um, something that is dangerous could be used for a potential actually, or economical incentive actually to produce electricity that would develop many other structures like factories or whatever that can be used actually all over uh, the, 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 in the lake shore. It's been suggested that a safe and reasonable time scale to use up this methane is around 50 to 100 years. So it's feasible that in the near future, this killer lake could be declared safe and it couldn't come any sooner. Still to this day, the effects of these eruptions serve as a reminder that if nothing is done, the unthinkable could occur. <laughs>